Yes, hi. Project bikes. I haven't touched this bike in probably six months. It just needs brakes and a seat. It's the brake cables and housing in the seat. I just blah. Keep not doing it. I gotta get it done. And get it out of here. Move over to my friend's basement and put it up for sale. I got wheels. I got wheels. I got wheels. I got wheels. I got the Schwinn project, and I got wheels. And more wheels. And another project bike, and a frame I gotta get rid of. I'm gonna turn into cheater bars. OMG. And on top of having too much junk to get rid of and unfun projects, I really all I can think about is that bridge trying to work it so bad. I deal with all these wheels, see what's good, what's not good, what's saveable, what I can sell, what I can use. Finishes Bridgestone brakes, which just been sitting for months and months and months, so these should be really easy. I just keep not doing it. I went and got another $40 project bike, even though I'm not supposed to be buying any more bikes, I have too much crap. Um, but it's got some black Tektro mid reach nutted brakes, which are actually really insanely hard to find at like $80 new. And it has the, the Shimano brake levers I need. And uh, it's got a kind of cool old Geno crank, like a single speed ring, it's totally cool. And maybe these wheels will be better than the ones I have for the Bridgestone project. So I couldn't say no, it's 40 bucks. It was a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down to a guy who was never in here around there fixing it up. He was he's got a job at UPS now, so he's working like 80 hours a week, just totally crazy. So it's a miracle he even meet me. It's a cool Geno cranks, man. Gorgeous, in their 70s. That's a cheapo frame, high 10 frame, with no trailer hanger, blah, blah, blah. I'll probably drive the bike for maybe someone make a single speed out of it. It's got a kind of beat, single speed back wheel's probably dead. Kind of beat single speed front wheel with a sun faded to gold hub and a, that's really loose. It's probably dead, but you never know. But for 40 bucks, I'm pretty into these levers and these brakes and anything else is really just kind of a bonus. So I'm gonna strip it down and then tomorrow's the big uh, Portland swap meet for cars. So I'm gonna go there looking for parts for my truck. But then I'm gonna get this Bridgestone done. So I get it photographed, get it online, and get it uh, hopefully sold, even though now there's suddenly two Bridgestones, two uh, CB1s on Craigslist, both for way too cheap. It's, it's, a, it's a rough time in Portland. No one's riding bikes, people start to write articles about it. No one's buying anything. And this is a real gorgeous, cool bike, and I'm really hoping I can get three or 400 bucks for it. The ones up on Craigslist are like tuned up and nice and ready to go for like 200 bucks. I'm like, you can't, you can't do that. You can't buy a bike and replace a chain of cassette and brake cables and housing and do all that labor and sell it for 200 bucks. Man, that's, that's just crazy. I mean, it's, 300 bucks with the labor. Another 50 to 100 bucks with parts. I mean, this bike, I got new tires. I mean, it's, it's got well over 150 bucks in parts, 300 bucks in labor. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Portland's made a bunch of improvements to make biking more safe or fun, and all the stuff is making it terrible and confusing and horrible. It made me and several other long term cyclists ever just stop riding these streets and stop caring. So, good job, Portland. You're really. Doing it right. Make sure it looks good on paper. Make sure you put a little feather in your cap. So I'm gonna tear this dude down. See what we can see. Do that, and then I really, I do kind of want to do the, a video on uh, the Schwinn brakes. We got the nothing special Schwinn done except for temporary brake lever and the brake squeal like a banshee. So I might um, do a video on adjusting those brakes. I also got some other brakes for it. So maybe I'll. I'll just switch out the new ones, or I'll do a video on getting the old ones to work perfect and switch out the new ones. <laughs> so why not do everything twice since it's making cool videos? Swap meet score! Well, I went to the Portland swap meet looking for truck parts. Because it's a car swap meet. But instead, the first booth they came to said uh, BMX parts, and I almost walked past it. I was like, you know, I better look just in case there's some other stuff. The first thing I saw was these bars. Well, really... These bars are the super long, super tall SR stem. Before they're Nitto Technomics, they're these SR stems. They're very popular and solve a lot of people's fit issues on bikes with too long a top tube, especially for small riders. So I was like, ah, maybe I should get them. Maybe I shouldn't. It's a 
car swap meet and blah 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 who knows what they want for stuff and then i also saw this cool one a black sr custom stem with weird black fake die comp levers totally cool and then i decided you know just keep looking and there's some cool like hella 80s 90s seat bags which no one really cares about but i like cool bright colorful stuff and these were like two for a buck. And then I saw these gloves and they were two for a buck. I should have got a lot more, honestly, but I don't know if anyone's going to care like I do. So got some gloves. And then I saw a bunch of toe clips. These are like Christophe extra large clips in brand new condition. Here's a bag of ale toe clips, like new old stock, unopened. Brand new condition and also, I believe, extra large. It's hard to find. You can always find new old stock in like small only. And then in a cruddy old melted and browned bag was this new old stock Dior derailleur. Um, and then on the next bin over, I found this new old stock. I mean, still new. I think they still make this Altus Mega Range derailleur, which are great for commuter bikes. And I think these were uh, a buck a piece. I also found this new old stock Dior XT chain deflector. For like a buck. Super, super cool. Shark fin, Dior XT. Someone on the eBay's will think that's really cool for old XT mountain bike that it fell off of. And then they had these cool stickers. So I get a couple bumper stickers. The car is a bike. I hurt my bike. Don't worry, be happy. They also had a thing of free stickers, and in it was this garbage pail kid, and I'm kind of in love with garbage pail kids, so I had to grab it. And then the next table down, there's a, a sign saying all these things, one dollar. And it was uh, all little crappy car emblems. But there's also this like brand new, nice park spoke wrench. So that's it. I walked around for another three and a half hours after this. With all this junk in my little basket. It's weighing me down. All those bars are steel, by the way. Very heavy. And uh, this is all I got. There's a whole second swap meet out there too, which I usually have better luck at, but I was tired and it was cold and it was starting to rain and my shoulders were hurting and I hadn't eaten and I just gave up, but I decided this is good enough. And then while in line, waiting for the bus ride back to the parking lot, uh, one of the things I really wanted, which was a 59 Buick grill to swap into my truck to make it more custom and cool, um, there was a guy in line with one. I looked everywhere for hours for one. <laughs> and it was mint condition and it was so nice and I tried to talk to him about it and he didn't even care <laughs> it's like yep 59 yep they're really cool yep I bought it go away it's like aww but I think this is a real nice highlight a new old stock Dior derailleur for for nothing that maybe I'll keep for something cool or uh, for a build or or sell because why not I mean this is Probably from the early 2000s. Yeah, whatever. Just some junk. These uh, bike extras. It's got the reflective material and neon green zipper. Like, this is pretty cool. Originally $10.99. So fun. But yeah, these uh, these tall, short SR stems are probably worth 10 or 15 bucks a piece. Just gotta cut them off these bars. The levers are probably worth nothing. These black ones might be worth something to somebody, but I kind of doubt it. And, uh, yeah, with bars like this, with the cloth tape all wrapped and stuff, and they're just crappy steel bars that aren't even interesting at all, really what I'm going to do is just hack saw through the bar and slide the stem out, throw the rest of the recycling. So I'm going to take care of this uh, specialized Sequoia aluminum frame. I bought this bike because it was super cheap on Craigslist. You know, sort of one of those, someone used to ride it and abandoned it in their garage sort of things. Um, cause I wanted a nice wheel set off of it and it had some kind of cool cranks and, you know, you know, some parts could use, some parts could sell. And I'm getting rid of it cause who cares about aluminum road frames? Absolutely no one. But it does have oversized tubes and oversized tubes, especially shaped ones, it's a little oval, are kind of fun and cool for, uh, cheater bars. Nice oval shape can get over a big, uh, a big old wrench or... I'm going to save this frame with my favorite hacksaw. It's a big, giant aluminum... Armstrong, Bloom, Manufacturing Co., Chicago. Hacksaw cuts really straight. It doesn't really flex or bind. I'm a huge fan. I hate cheap, adjustable hacksaws. They're just the worst. But I cut this frame in half, throw the rest in the recycling. 
pinching my hacksaw blade because it's a crappy frame under stress. So now I'm cutting it, the rest of it's trying to move and it's all stressed out. Quality. See it pop up like this, like jumped up some under stress. Slapped in a tight jig and just weld it up whether it was ready to be or not. Clamp an advice right on the head tube, just evil. Don't ever do it except for if you destroy the frame. Woo. Look at this guy. Nice big teardrop shape. I like it on some tool handles. Nice big oval shape. Might cut these guys off, might not, because it's funny. And if you ever wanted to see what the inside of an aluminum frame looks like, you can see the the down tube is butted up against the head tube. Tig welded from the outside. You can see from the inside, no penetration at all. Uh, I wouldn't think this was a good weld, but uh, maybe that's how aluminum's supposed to look, just all on the outside, no penetration. If this was brass braised, like I usually do, you'd see the brass all the way on the inside. It'd be a nice little internal smooth fillet as well. Same with silver. Clamp that aluminum. And now we got a little top tube one too. Nice teardrop shape. Just long enough, doesn't weigh anything. And uh, you know, I wish I needed the rear for anything, but I just don't. So into the recycling, it shall go. I'm also gonna do the bars and stems we got from the swap meet. They're old, heavy steel, totally uninteresting bars. They have cloth tape on, which is very hard to come off or unwrap. It usually just wants to shred and tear and be annoying. It's got cool old red bar end plugs. I'll probably save these. But if this was a nice bar, I would take the time to fight all this tape off. And these are nice brake levers, I'd do it, you know, to save all that stuff. But they're not. I have several sets of these diatoms, no one cares. So here's the trick for uh Cheap shitty bars you don't care about. You just want to save the stem. It is like 10 seconds to do it this way versus 20 or 30 minutes of fighting this tape and all the junk. Yeah, you can kind of see. So I'm just going to cut the bar right next to the stem, get it out the way. Away with the old bar! And now, just loosen that stem bolt, and it is free, and we saved this nice old SR, very tall stack height with a very short reach stem. These things are absolutely great for making people's bikes fit, especially small women, people with short arms. Short people have the unfortunate problem of still needing their bike to be very long to clear the front wheel so you don't have a bunch of toe overlap and wreck. So often, as frames get smaller and smaller, the top tubes stay too long. So a nice tall short stem that well, brings a short person up and back. Saves the day. Gonna save these cool red bar end plugs too, because why wouldn't you? They're old and vintage and in really good shape. I mean, the inside's a little rusty and that screw's a little rusty, but that could probably be taken care of for about 50 cents at the local hardware store. And now I have more recycling! Probably get a little uh, M4 or M5 button head Allen or something too and get it in there and make this even cooler. This guy's, this one's real stuck. <laughs> oh, don't die, rubber. 
the nuts are all rusted in there. Maybe not worth the time of time and effort to save, maybe. Cool. But I'm not doing anything more important. You gonna do the same thing with this other one. This one's pretty nice. Another nice tall SR stem with only 60 millimeters reach. Most stems would be like there, so it's you know an inch or two taller. All this effort is really probably not worth saving these, but they're cool. It's more of a shame to waste things. The black one's almost cool. These levers are almost cool. Maybe... Maybe we'll do it a different way. Maybe we will try and save these. Just using this Allen wrench as a pry bar. Sort of wiggle these old style plugs out. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'm sure this is dangerous too, but these old uh, weird, soft, spongy rubber 10 speed grips are a nightmare to come off, and they're just easier to cut. Do it on the bottom so you can't see the scratch marks on the bars, but in this case, I don't care about these bars, so I don't know if that even matters. Just razors in the night. Weird, no name, fake diacomp, chicken levers in black. A little bit of gold sun fading. Well, I don't care, probably not. Is it worth the time to save them? Probably not. Interesting. You almost never see old stems in black. It doesn't look spray painted. Spray paint does not stick to aluminum. And it'd be flaking and chipping off like crazy if it was spray painted. Look at this cheapo junk bar. It's like a randonneur bar except for it caves in on both sides. Very dumb. This is a little speed handle deburring tool. So you can come around and just take off any little burrs or sharp edges from inside of these tubes. You can do this with a file just real quickly going around too. It's not a big deal. But I have my sweet deburring tool because I built a lot of frames and this is the fastest, easiest way of cleaning up. And the outside is a little crusty. So the same thing, we'll just take a file, knock down any of these burrs or little sharp little lips or edges so we don't stab or cut ourselves in the future while trying to use this as a cheater bar. Nice and smooth. I'm not going to today, but if I use this all the time, I probably would. Cut these off and file them smoother. Cheater bars! I don't need a bunch of extra cheater bars. I have the, the Univega uh, seat tube cheater bar, so Maybe I'll do a giveaway with these, or send them around and forget forever. If anybody wants these, let me know, and uh, we'll do a giveaway, or ship them, or local pickup, or whatever. I almost thought I was done. I tried to finish this video without actually working any wheels, which is not cool at all. So all these wheels, most came off junk bikes, projects I bought, things I found too cheap, but just couldn't help myself. Things I couldn't be bring myself to donating to Bike Farm. Um, things that I'm hoping maybe I can sell. 
This one I took in on trade for a, road, a silver road wheel. So it's about doing the Bridgestone 400. And a black single speed wheel would be way cooler. Um, so things I'm doing is checking the hub to make sure they don't feel super tight, grindy, or dead. So this hub feels fine. Then... Oh. Then checking the dish. To make sure the wheel's not crazy out of whack. The dishing tool, tool checks center. It touches the the hub where the dropout touches and then touches the rim on both sides. And then you can check both sides and make sure the wheel's perfectly dished. So this is this has like a millimeter gap over here. So the wheel is actually like a millimeter this way. So if I did work on that, I'd tighten probably on this freewheel side. Maybe loosen on the other side and try and move the whole center of the wheel down a half millimeter. But it's also only a half millimeter, no one cares. Sometimes you get a wheel like this and it's out like a centimeter and then it's gonna rub the frame, tires aren't gonna fit right. So you have to dish if you go around and tighten up all the spokes on one side, a quarter turn, loosen all the spokes on the other side, a quarter turn, check. Do that over and over again until you get the wheel centered. Um, after that, I actually think I did this to this wheel already. We're gonna check, put it in the stand, we're gonna check some roundness and some trueness. This wheel's got kind of a low spot, kind of a high spot, not much, it's within tolerance. I like to go around and check all the spoke tension, because sometimes it'll be like, everything will be 20, and then you'll get to one spoke that is like 12, and the next one's like 25 or 28, and you're like, what? So uh, sometimes people can true wheels and just way over tighten one spoke, or one spoke's loose, and then over tighten the ones next to it to try and make up for it, to try and make it true. Like this one is like 14. This one's a little low, so we could probably tighten both of these and uh, keep the thing true. Because um, if you tighten a spoke, you know, it pulls it over to one side. So if I tighten this, it'd make the wheel really untrue. But if I tighten the two next to each other, it might, it might kind of pull it back and balance itself out and keep it true. It'll probably come back in the truing process, knock it right back down. So we shall see. So I'll do all that, and if I can get a wheel round and true and spoke tension all even, seems like a good wheel. The hub doesn't feel dead, I'll clean the whole thing. Probably open it up, put some fresh grease in at a minimum, maybe put all new bearings and fresh grease in. If it seems like you can use them and really make sure the hub looks good before I put on one of my own personal bikes or a bike I'm going to sell. I don't... I've ridden some real beater stuff in the past and a lot of people ride some real beater stuff and don't notice or don't care. Like I found one wheel that has a fixed gear wheel that had some dents and some flat spots, pretty minor stuff a lot of people aren't going to notice, but I don't want to ride on my own bike and I wouldn't put on a bike for sale. But I put the wheel up for sale for 20 bucks. It's still a good wheel. If someone's real broke and needs a single speed wheel, um, it'll be fine. They most likely, unless they're like, you know, a real pro cyclist been doing it for years and years and years and ridden really nice stuff. They're not going to notice that it's slightly crappy. Um, they might notice it in the brake. They might feel the brake pulsating. But I said, you know, I had a little dent and I bent it back out. I'm like, well, probably best for a uh, fixed gear without a rear brake. So I'm going to do that and go through these wheels and hopefully throw some away or put some up for sale or figure out this one's totally great and this one's totally great and they're almost kind of matchy and they look good on the Bridgestone, that's what I'm really kind of hoping. And go through this pile of wheels. So I'm going through the wheels and this is the set that was off the uh, little Shogun from the beginning of this video and they're junk. Front hub it was loose, um, the cones are gravel or destroyed, the rear's got a cracker on a spoke nipple, big giant dent, totally destroyed, but I think the front rim's alright, and they're the same rims. And I threw them in the trash in the recycling when I dug them out, I think, I think we might try and do a rim swap video. 
So we'll see how that goes. And that's it for the taking care of business video. We got uh, the swap meet stuff cleaned up, stems cut off and whatnot. We got uh, little frame that was in the way, cut down and cheater bars taken care of. Ah, yes, you just want to cuddle so much. And, uh, and the Bridgestone is in the stand. So we finished this, have all the bikes out of here except for the nothing special Schwinn project. And I'll probably finish that and move it out of the way and bring the Bridgestone 400 back and do that project. So now I got all black wheels, I got the black brakes, I got some black Origin 8 cranks, do a cool black single speed. Or maybe we'll switch it up and end up getting put a road wheel in and doing a cool black, you know, one by. Because that would be sick. Huh, Scout. You look a little pathetic, bud. So yeah, thanks for watching.